All right. Um, so if you haven't got the GitHub wiki page up, I've got a bit of an introduction to UARTs and how they work. So has anyone here not dealt with a UART before and sort of not really aware of the protocol and what they're used for and things like that? Has everyone heard of a UART and, and had a look at the page and understands what's going on? So put very simply, you're basically shifting data out a character or a byte at a time, serially, to someone else. Could be a PC, could be another, you know, microchip somewhere, another microcontroller. So they're, um, they're a widely used communication sort of form, I guess. And I thought it would be interesting to demonstrate how at least the transmit works because that's a little bit simpler than doing the receive. And if you've written a transmitter, you can probably then you've got a better chance of writing a receiver. Um, yeah, so as I said, very simply, if you look at this little diagram here, the little that guy, he talks about each character um, being transmitted preceded by a start bit and followed by a stop bit, and obviously the eight bits of the byte serially on the line as time goes by. What's that? Oh yeah, for good one. Very good. And literally that's all you have to do. Uh, in terms of what data you put on the line, the next challenge is timing it. So everyone's aware if you've used a UART before, you must select the board rate. So the, the transmitter and the receiver have to be in sync in terms of the rate at which the stuff's being transferred. And so, uh, you know, you have to know in advance what the board rate of the line's going to be, and then everything just goes you know, smoothly. Um, so, yeah, the framing of the data is very simple, the timing is a little bit more complicated. No, that's all right, that's all right. Um, so, if you have the code, the Verilog code, in front of you, for the UART block, there's basically two bits of work that you're going to have to do to get this working, to get this function. One of the bits of work is the timing related uh, synchronization, I guess, or the timing related stuff. So you're going to have to implement a clock divider to control the transmit logic so that it happens at a certain time. Um, today, in this demo, I've chosen to run everything at the 115200 board rate or you know 115.2 kilohertz you can also say it as um, <clears throat> so essentially inside the design you have to have some logic which is clocked at that rate um, or you know can emulate being clocked at that rate um, and in the demo yeah, I've made it very simple I've basically given you a task to do which will be divide down the 50 megahertz clock so you create a 115.2 kilohertz clock, and then with that clock, you will then run a state machine, which will shift out the bits serially, beginning with the start bit, followed by the eight data bits, least significant bit first, finish by the stop bit. Um, I put in a little bit of infrastructure there to um, detect the edge on the push button. So yeah, at the end of the day, what you're going to have, and if you're looking at this what to design section of the wiki page. You're going to have some data in a register, as we saw yesterday. So at reset, there will be a value in a register of hex 30, which in ASCII is the character 0. And every time you press a button, I want you to make that state machine, transmit that data, and then increment that value. Um, so the next time you push the button, you'll increment the next uh, value uh, in terms of hex. And it's the next ASCII character, which is one, and then two and three, and so on. So you'll see that transmitted if you implement it successfully, and you hook up the hardware on the board properly, and put it into your computer, and you have the right drivers and the right terminal program. You'll see when you press the push button that characters will come out, and it'll be the incrementing ASCII values in the design. Um, I've given you almost everything. All you really need to do is implement. Well, think about how you're going to divide down the 50 megahertz clock to create the 115, um, 200 board rate clock, or 115.2 kilohertz 
to kill that spot in the design. And then what states you add to the state machine skeleton I've put in the file to control it shifting out the bits as you go. So it should be relatively easy. And I've got a solution file, obviously, and it's you know only about maybe eight more lines you have to add to that file to make it work. So I hope it's not too easy, but um, I don't know, it's sort of cool to get at least something working. Sorry? Uh, yeah. What, what two boards? Oh, yeah, the, the UART thing. Uh, well, there's a picture. All right, so. Yeah, there's a guy. So, to, how to connect this guy to the D0 nano? There's a picture on the board. Uh, sorry, on the wiki. But maybe I can write more explicit details somewhere. You have to. Oh, no, I have written pretty, pretty clear details, I think, on the page, right? <coughs> there's also. Yeah, there's a picture. So we just count the picture. Yeah, basically you want to connect it to the sixth pin on that side of the board. I don't know, it should be obvious in the picture, you can figure it out. Um, but anyway, if I look at the code here, the next bit, I can sort of step you through the thinking. <clears throat> so I mean, uh, sorry, from that introduction, does anyone not understand what we're trying to do here? Basically, you're just trying to clock a state machine at the board rate that the UART is going to transmit at. And then the data will come out at that rate over the line. Is that kind of clear? Does anyone want me to explain a little bit further on that? Okay, cool. So, I'm looking at the UART.v file. If you are too, you'll see, you'll see at the top here we have some declarations of ports on the module. We have a 50 megahertz clock coming in, the 8-bit LED, which is obviously on board, the two key inputs for the push buttons, the four switches, which we won't actually use in this exercise, and then we've got two new ones. One's UART transmit and one is UART VCC. So the UART VCC we just set to one uh, because we need the power, little buffers on the board, which um, we should be able to draw enough power from the FPGA to just power that little buffer. It's a little bit of a hack. I wouldn't recommend doing this too often, but it works. And then we have the, the UART TX line. So you can see that's a single wire, and we're going to be transmitting everything over this single output from the design the UART TX. So if we go through the file, you'll see some registers declared. So the first one is a 4-bit transmit state register. So in the state machine further down, we're going to use that variable to remember the state we're in. So I'll talk a little bit about that later. Transmit data is an 8-bit register. I guess you can figure out what that's for. That's going to hold the value that we're currently transmitting on the UI line. And then we've got a register there and an edge detect wire to detect when we push the push button. Uh, so next we have just some reset logic. Uh, the push button is active low, which means when the signal goes low, it's when the button's been pressed. So we should have seen this before. We tie the UI line high with a with an assign. Actually, maybe I will use that laser point. That one? Yeah. You see the UART VCC equals 1 there? Probably not. I'm going to read this at the back, sorry. Um, next, we have some logic relating to the clock division. So, everyone's aware of the concept of like a 50 megahertz clock, and you're going to have to divide that up to make a slower running clock. 50 megahertz is a lot faster than 115 kilohertz. So we're going to have to figure out what you divide that clock by to create, or what we divide the faster 50 megahertz clock by to get a clock at the correct board rate. And then we finally get down to some synchronous logic. Uh, all right, so here you've got me prompting you to fill in the value where this clock divider counter should wrap back to zero. So what you're going to want to do 
is figure out when we should make our 115.2 kilohertz clock toggle. And you're going to want to put that condition in that sort of if-else condition line there. Uh, who reckons they've got a fair chance of working that out? Yeah? Alright. Um, that's on all the hands. So maybe I should go through it. Um, in that wall over there. I very rarely do like classroom. What happened? <laughs> Something here. I very rarely do this sort of stuff. Alright. So we've got a 50 megahertz system clock, right? And can you guys see that? I'll oh, write really big, don't worry. Okay. So we've got a 50 megahertz. Clock. The clock period of that, so that's the rate. The time that you've got for every single clock period is 20 nanoseconds. Okay? So, let's see, frequency, the period, usually T, 20 nanoseconds, right? So that means uh, from here to here, that's 20 nanoseconds. Uh, okay. Very good. The one one two five uh, rate of one hundred fifteen point two kilohertz. Clock. I don't know what his period is. I need to divide <laughs> one divided by one hundred fifteen. But yeah, you, you know what I'm getting at here. We want to figure out how long that period is. Uh, accessories calculate. Here we go. So 115 for 1 divided by 115, 200. 8.68 divided by 116. That'll be 86 nanoseconds? Right? Or 860 nanoseconds? 8.6 microseconds. 8.6 microseconds. Okay. So 8,681 nanoseconds. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So period for this guy is, what was it, 8,286? 868. 8680. That's nanoseconds. So we had 20 nanoseconds for the clock that we have. And we want a clock period of 8,680 nanoseconds, right? So obviously we know how many clock periods. We divide that by. Is that right? 868? Yeah. Okay. It's 434. Yep. 864. Divide by. 20. It's 434. So we want 434. Now we've got our fast clock here, 50 megahertz, blah, blah, blah. We want 444 of these guys, 434 of yeah. these guys, every single 115 kilohertz UI clock cycles. Um, so what we can do is essentially run a counter and we sort of count up every 434 and toggle the line. But actually, you count up to half of that and then toggle it because you've got to toggle this guy here and toggle this guy here and toggle that. Because 434 is from this edge to that edge, but we've got to toggle him here. So. Yeah, yep. You can do a mode operation, can't you? You can do a what? A mod modulo operation. Oh, you could do a modulo, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, so essentially you have a counter counting up to here, which is 217. 
and then telling it register the toggle. And then you count to 217 again and telling it to toggle back. And that will give you your clock running at the UART board rate that you want. Um, so I hope you all know what to write in this else if statement now. The next bit of the design you have to fill in is this else if statement here, which actually toggles the UART clock. So we have the counter which we've just sort of implemented, which is wrapping around. Let me turn this off again. So we have our counter, which is giving us a half period of 115.2 kilohertz. All we essentially do here is tell this register to toggle whenever that matches a certain value. And you could use basically any value um, that clock divider counter is at. So put in what you think would be good there to make our UR clock. And then internally in the design, we have a clock which is operating at 115 kilohertz. And with that, we can clock a state machine, which shifts out our data. So we have the next bit of the file here, which is a synchronous block clocked off that UR clock we've just created. Um, and in the reset, uh, what do you call that? In the reset part of the uh, block, we initialize a few things. We initialize the state which we'll use to shift out our, to generate the URTX lock. So you, we, we just call transmit state of zero the idle state. Um, with UR, you, if you've read through the guide on the wiki, the idle state of these UR lines is high. So if nothing's going on, the line stays high, logically. Um, and of course we initialize the data that we want to send. Here we set it to the hex character 30, which is ASCII 0. Um, Alright, so when we're out of reset, what do we do? Well, we have a case statement based on our transmit state. And it's the same as like a, you, you all know what a case or a switch statement is, I guess, right? You put a variable in and then go to a certain part of the code below it based on what the value of that variable is. Um, so you've got the idle state, and I said you're probably going to want a state where you put out your start bit, um, your eight data bits will all be shifted out in the same state, I think, and then the stop bit state, and then from there you want to go back to idle. So I've asked you to implement a design where when you press the push button, you go and transmit a character, right? So you're going to want to put an if statement in that first state where you say, you know, if uh, we have a push, if we have a button press, then let's go and transmit this. I've already put in the infrastructure or the, the little bit of logic to detect a push button press for you. Uh, I, I believe you covered that yesterday. So the signal that you're going to want to test for is this one, key edge detect, or key one edge detect, I think. So you're going to want to put an if statement where if key one edge detect, then go and do something. Um, as well, at the bottom here, I've, I'm putting out the data that we're going to transmit onto the LED line. So. Hopefully that should be pretty easy for people to code up. Uh, for those of you on Linux, it's very easy to run test bench in that directory. You can just go in there and type make run, and there's a little UART decoder, and it'll run and tell you what you're transmitting. I should have put a timeout in that file, actually. Oh, um, sorry. And for the rest, uh, Let's fire up a quarters project and <laughs> go through that room roll. Uh, oh, so 
Actually, who would like a little bit of time to sort of code up the state machine and everything? Who's, who's had a crack at that already? No one? Oh, I'll give you a bit of time to have a play with that then. Um, and... Yeah, let me know if you need help. And I'm just going to go through and set up a quarters project and try and get it simulated that way. So I haven't done that yet. So, <laughs> Yes, sorry, we're, we're going to use no parity bit, single stop bit, 8 bit data, single start bit. Just the, you know, the most basic UR protocol. <laughs> 